Hello, St. James. It was exactly one year ago this season, this season of Lent that we now find ourselves, uh, in which we uh, left this space um, as COVID uh, began to change our lives in dramatic ways. And so I invite you to a holy Lent, but I invite you to the Lent that your heart and your soul needs. So it may not be a Lent in which you uh, take off chocolate or, or, or other uh, vices in your life. It may be a Lent in which you sustain yourself with whatever you need uh, to help see hope more clearly, uh, to help uh, fortify you for the, the, the journey ahead. And uh, I wish you a blessed Lent, and I hope it's the, the season you need at this time of year. A few things that the church would like to offer uh, to help you and your family through this season. Uh, one, uh, Jen Taylor has put together uh, Lent to go bags, and those are available outside the school entrance uh, for, for folks to pick up with some things inside that might help uh, during that Lenten journey. Uh, also, every day starting tomorrow, uh, it'll be, uh, after tomorrow, it'll be every weekday plus Saturday, uh, we will have a daily meditation available for you. Uh, we didn't on Sunday because you can participate in our virtual worship, uh, but the, re the remaining days there will be a meditation, and you can participate in that. And I invite you not to be intimidated uh, by that task. Uh, your voice and, and your feelings uh, and, and, and your wisdom as you go through this season is invaluable uh, and, and would benefit the whole of us. So you can participate either on the receiving end or on the giving end uh, with, with that uh, daily meditation. And also our adult formation committee uh, uh, is going to begin Mere Christianity, the classic by C.S. Lewis during this season as well. So there's lots of ways uh, that the church might be able to help you uh, deepen your faith. And those are all available through our weekly email. And with that, we begin our worship. Blessed be God who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. <clears throat> Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, 
where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me and take a deep, deep breath. Breathe in and out. Feel that breath of God. Feel it enter you. Feel it imbue you. Feel that breath that breathed into the dust and made it life and made it matter and made it love. Feel that working through you. I wonder how you are. How are you doing? You see, I can't figure out what to say to you to start this Lenten journey because I don't know where all of you are. And I don't want to add any more to that weight pressing on your shoulders. Lent can be a heavy time, and we do need times in our lives where we recalibrate, where we take a look at where we're heading and we realign ourselves with our truest purposes. We realign ourselves with God's love. And that's important work. And sometimes we do that work by stripping things out of our lives so that we can have some clean space, so we can be stripped a little bit bare and confront our truest nature and be honest with ourselves. But it feels like the last 11 and a half months have been a Lent unto themselves where we've already been living with enough restriction. We haven't been able to go to the places we normally love to go, and even more so, we haven't been able to be with the people we love to be with in the manner that we're used to being with them. We've dealt with loss, pain, suffering. And beyond the pandemic, the last 11 and a half months have asked us to confront injustice, political divisiveness, hurt of so much of our humanity. And we do have difficult work to do. That work needs to be done. We need to listen to the hurt outside our doors. We need to have eyes wide open to justice. We need to heal as a country. But we really need this Lent to be what we need to keep going forward to keep breathing deeply and letting that divine spirit do its healing work. And that's my invitation to you. This Lent, hear the words that you'll hear during the uh, penitential liturgy, litany that we will, we will participate in in a few minutes. Know that that work is in front of us. But as you plan to walk through this season, ask yourself, what do I need to sustain myself to have hope beyond this season, to let that hope and that light grow inside of me? How do I face the cross but see beyond it to the light of Easter morning? How do I take that truth that God breathed life into me and let that be a sustaining force in my life. That's our work. Now this day, Ash Wednesday, is filled with contradictions or complexities. We have a gospel reading about all of the pieties that we're not supposed to show. Uh, we're not supposed to fast uh, 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 and let people look at our, uh, our, our, our gaunt faces. Uh, we're not supposed to pray out in public for all to see. We're not supposed to loudly put our coins into the coffers. But we're called to do all those things. 
We're called to take care of uh, our brothers and sisters in need. We're called to be generous. We're called to be prayers, to, to commune with God. And we need to commune with God. Uh, we are called to fast and to strip our lives down to what is truly important. And we have this service where we put an ash cross on our forehead and we walk out those doors so everyone knows uh, that we went to church as we hear that reading about not let everybody know uh, about all of our piety. But that mark, a mark is a reminder that God is in here, that what God cares about is all that life that God blew into us, that God gave us. The rest is but dust. That reminder's for us. And the grace of this season is that we walk towards a love that is so profound that it poured itself out upon the cross. That that love that from the cross said, Father, please forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. It's a love that we're walking toward. And beyond that love is the hope of a God who conquered even death. And so let that be your compass. I've been reading with the adult formation group, Henry Nouwen's Life of the Beloved. And in it, he talks to his friend who is not so uh, much a religious person and neither is uh, most of his friends. Uh, he lives in New York City and he says, you know, there is a lot to enjoy about the life outside of the church. There's a lot to enjoy about city life. But do know what it can't give you. It cannot give you your identity. If you try to establish your identity, your sense of how you matter by those yardsticks, it will always fail you. You are God's beloved. That is where you get your purpose. That is where you get your sense of how much you matter. It's not from the world. Part of Lent is stripping ourselves down to that truth. That God took that dust, breathed that life into it, and made you so that you matter more than you ever knew you could matter. And to trust that to experience the world, to enjoy the world, but to know that that is not what the world can give you. That is what you can share with the world. That truth that you are God's beloved and so are they. I was also reading... Uh, our, arch, our presiding bishop, Bishop, uh, bishop Curry, and he was talking about a time uh, where he and his staff were deeply, deeply discouraged. And uh, he was reading a book, uh, Tuesdays with Maury. You pro <clears throat> probably have heard of the book. Uh, and in it, uh, the writer Mitch uh, is visiting his favorite college professor, his uh, favorite college professor, uh, Maury is uh, dying of ALS, and uh, in those last uh, days, uh, they meet together weekly, and he sharing, uh, Maury is sharing his wisdom, uh, some of his uh, greatest lectures uh, with Mitch. And uh, one of the last stories he tells him is this. He says there's a wave and he's loving life as a wave. It is wonderful. He's playing uh, to and fro on the water and he's breaking left and right and he's just frolicking in being a wave and he loves it. And it's, it's just, it's thrilling. And he watches uh, and as he gets closer to shore, all of a sudden he looks over and he sees the other waves and he sees them crashing into the shore and that's it and he has this look that just sort of takes over his his his, his face and another wave uh, comes to him and says what 
what's wrong? And he says, you know how, what happens. You know how this ends. We, we crash into the shore. And the wave says to him, you know the deep truth is that we really aren't waves. We're part of the ocean. Use that to say, uh, Bishop Curry used that to say uh, that this movement uh, uh, that 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 we're part of this uh, this sense of of moving uh, the church or, or moving uh, our country or whatever movement we feel like we're part of uh, is bigger than ourselves, is bigger than our disappointments, bigger than us getting thrown into the uh, into the sand uh, and where we pull ourselves up. Um, that, that the movement is so much larger than ourselves. But I think it's also a perfect metaphor for Ash Wednesday. We spend so much of our lives thinking, ourselves, thinking of ourselves as waves. Ben Moss, rector of St. James. Why I matter. What I've accomplished, what I haven't accomplished my shortcomings, my strengths, my characteristics. And those details do matter. But what matters even more is that I'm part of the ocean, that I am dust, just like you are dust. And God breathed life and love and purpose and being into me. And it's when I realize my participation in the ocean supersedes my identity as Ben Moss and my stubbornness as Ben Moss and my point of view as Ben Moss and all the things that I press down upon and wrap myself around. That's when I can let go be part of something larger than myself and let God in and move through me and maybe along the way heal me. It's my prayer for you this Lent that you can open up, get beyond yourself, let God in, feel God moving through you, Feel yourself as part of something bigger than you, part of the ocean, part of God's movement. Amen. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. The season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had become separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and their faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by the reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance. And as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and our Redeemer.
This is a moment where in a, in a minute I will invite you if you uh, feel so called to impose ashes on yourself uh, or on the people that you gather with. Uh, it can be palm ashes from a, a, a previous uh, Palm Sunday frond that might be uh, available or it can be ashes of any kind and if you haven't prepared ashes in advance you can stop now and uh, and prepare ashes if uh, if that would be meaningful to you and remember that is an outward sign uh, of an inward uh, reality that we are dust that God breathed life into and so I encourage you if you don't uh, have ashes available or, um, or don't feel called to do that that you use the time of the psalm uh, to just reflect on our mortal nature and, and not necessarily on the fleetingness of it but the wonderful gift of God breathing God's essence, God's spirit uh, into us and uh, that that is the essence of our life. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The appropriate words as you impose ashes are, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The psalm for today is Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Please join me as we say together the litany of penitence. It can be found on page 267 of the Book of Common Prayer or you can just hear the words. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who will come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of our Son, of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. sisters and my brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.